All right, greetings once again, fellow traders. This is Michael Storm, also known as Robinhood. And today I'd like to chat with you about what I use to determine a trade, which trade I think might be better. If I'm going to be looking at a couple of different things, like let's say pound Australia versus pound New Zealand, which one would I rather trade? And we'll start off um, looking at pound odd and we'll go into the daily chart. Now, we were short this um, several days back in our live room. We were short way up here. Uh, we covered as it dropped. Um, the first fall was pretty decent, um, about 295 pips. That, that took, um, well, let's see, we have two days, a half a day, another half a day. Put it all together. <laughs> you know, it's three days roughly, right? But uh, done in two full day increments, half a day and a half a day. So we had a decent drop, um, 300. And then the other day we were short up here and we were looking for this to also fall pretty brutally. And we had a 340 uh, something pip fall in three days plus like a half of a day, okay? Not only were we short on the pound Australia, but we were also short on pound New Zealand way up here, but this lasted a ton longer. Uh, we were short not just here, but all of this, and it really, it took a substantial um, amount of time. It, it did fall 300 pips, but please notice that took about eight or nine days to get down to where we were uh, initially targeting. So if you're going to be looking at, say, two trades, and you're wondering, which one do I take? You know, do I go short uh, pound odd, or, or do I go short pound New Zealand? Um, and has it gone too far? Have I, have I missed the trade? Um, you know, how, how do you view it? Do you, do you view it currently as a bull or do you view it currently as a bear? We've discussed in times past how we look at uh, the correlations, like uh, for instance, um, New Zealand dollar. Let me get that up there. And you can see, you know, we did a really nice move. Um, if you look at the monthly, right, we are down into levels where, you know, if you remember, this took about a year, a year and a month, maybe, to go up like mad. And then it took a year to fall uh, to reach this level. So while the whole world was a buyer up here chasing it, we were actually shorting it pretty heavy for a, a really long time. We, we were quite bearish, but right now we're not. <laughs> um, if Look here. And we'll just use the pip counter on the monthly. Um, I'm sorry, the little cursor thingamajig. That was 11 months up and, well, 11 months down. Okay, run your fibs, take a look at the critical wicks on the monthly. You know, you're at a good level uh, to actually be looking long. So when I drop into the um, lower time frames like weekly, we were all desperate to be long right here. When we look at the daily, you know, we, we saw this daily buy, figured it would go up more. Um, you know, there's a, a bar of follow through, a little bit more decent pullback, which you can see on the 40, on the um, four hour chart would look beautiful, right? Here's great up move, three wonderful pushes, radical pullback, and then it just continued. So for the last three days, it's, it's up and up and up like crazy, um, looking at the daily. Three days, 138 pips, I think. So what do you do right now when you've missed, you know, kind of missed a trade? So we're always looking at New Zealand every day without fail. We're always looking at Australia every day without fail. We were long down here. We're out now. It seems like odd needs a bit of a pullback. It seems like New Zealand needs a bit of a pullback. And so when you want to pick a trade, like which one's going to be the better one right now, is it going to be pound Australia or should we be looking at pound New Zealand? I would say always start with the monthly. When in doubt, always start with a monthly chart. Now take a quick look at this uh, pound Australia with your eyes and tell me, what do you really see? I'll give you a moment. I'll just be silent for a minute so you can stare at the chart. Pound Australia monthly chart will tell you what I see. I see that it's wedging 
up against this. We've got a bunch of moving averages below. The 100, uh, the 20, the 40. We've got the 200 above. So it's wedging. It's tightening up like mad. And it doesn't seem like... It's the most ideal thing to either go long or short at the moment based on a monthly chart. I don't seem to have a ton of direction, but if I go into pound New Zealand, do you notice something a little different? I'm, I'm not gonna assume that, that you can see it, so I'm just gonna point out what I'm looking at. And you may not notice it, but just <laughs> this is how I look at things, okay? To me, Maybe it's just me. This looks like a really decent push one and a very decent pullback number two. A very cool looking three and a four and a five. To, I'm not talking Elliott Wave, so don't don't even yeah you know, don't even go there. Um, I'm just talking about the orderliness of it. See how it was two months up and a couple months down. Two months up and a few months down. Right here we've got four months up and a couple of months down. Over here, it's about five months up, three down, and this, one, two, three, four. One good month down, three months up, three months down. It seems more orderly, like it has more room. Okay, forgetting about all the past, all right, way, way, way back there, but I, I don't think we should, but everything to the left of this red line, just forget it for now. Three months up, one month down, three months up, and a couple of months down. And here we are, three months up. So I'm just thinking down. Uh, that's just me. You know, maybe I'm wrong. All right. But when I look at the orderliness of the move, it seems like this has more opportunity to go down than the pound Australia, which seems wedging. And I, I don't quite know what to do with it. So when I run over to pound New Zealand and I see what's happened in the past and I look here, I would say this has got more room. Now that's just starting on the monthly. And then I go look weekly. Now granted there is a weekly bear harmonic in here. I know, I know. But look at the size of the PRC zone. I mean, <laughs> Who wants to get short now and then have it ripping a powder as it rocks up 800 pips, which, you know, it could it obviously could do that. So I never trade off of just this alone. It just doesn't make sense. Okay. Not to me, at least. So looking at the monthly, I believe it's probably a short. Looking at the weekly seems pretty short to me. I look at the channel and... Uh, this move, even though I know it's not mathematically correct, it does look like an A, B, C, D type of move, even though it doesn't mathematically match. And then I look over here, and I've got my stochastics all peaked. And I know that they're going to eventually cross, right? I mean, there, there it is. <laughs> it's crossed. It's pointed down. It has a lot of room to run. How long does it take for this to run? Well, how long does it take to go up? How many bars? I mean, I'm looking at 11, 12 weeks. So to get the stochastics over here, to land over here, you know, that was 12 bars. How long does it take to come down? Is it five, eight, six, uh, 10? Or, or is it 15? I don't know. Let's see? I don't know. It could be quite a while to get these stochastics to come down here and finally bury themselves. We have a weekly sell bar right now. Pretty good looking bar. After this two push move, I like the weekly sell. So to me, it seems like the pound New Zealand has more of a chance to go down monthly, weekly, and daily. Now we were all short up here and we did bail as it landed into this because this is still an uptrend. It is absolutely an uptrend. So I put this in, the fib, from the bottom all the way up here to the top. And I'll be staring at my, uh, my chart and its movement. And one other thing I see that looks kind of good to me 
is that we have a bit of a trend line right in here. I know I'm slicing a little bit through some of the uh, the areas, but you get the you know the general gist of it is we've got a trend line in place. I mean, I could go all the way back like that if I want to and try and connect to you know everything, but it, I don't think it has to be that exact of a uh, of a science, right? We were anticipating days ago that this would fall and attack the trend line and at least get back down to this moving average. So I think this is the better short. And when I look at it on all time frames, it seems like it has many, many days, weeks, as a matter of fact, uh, to fall down into these levels. Now, it could be a really, really long time. And that's really not my game. <laughs> you know, my game is not to just get short right now and hold on for like, you know, a month or two months or something like that. I don't want to, I don't want to wait. And I don't like all that risk and just, you know, being short and watching something whip up and whip down. And oh, now I've got 300 pips. And oh, now I got nothing. And oh my God, now I got 400 pips. And oh, it's all gone. And, you know, I can't sit there and handle a roller coaster ride like that. That's not my style. So I'm looking at the monthly thinking short, looking at the weekly, thinking short, looking at the daily, and still thinking short. But I know that nothing falls in a straight line. So even though we have attacked this, right, I go and look here at my four hour, and I really like the way these waves all worked, all these little guppy waves here, it was pretty, pretty phenomenal. And yeah, we've broken the 100 somewhat, it's only a matter of time before we eventually come down here to the 200. And I have everything crossing nicely. But, but nothing moves in a straight line. And there could be a significant bounce before going short again. So being that the midpoint is here and the investor trend is way up here, and this area that was so supportive for so long finally failed. It just seems to me that maybe, just maybe, we can come up. How much? I don't know. 90 would be really nice, wouldn't it? Maybe 100. Who knows? Maybe we can get 100. So on the lower time frames, it seems overdone. And I personally, just me, okay, I would rather have it bounce from where we are have it bounce 90 to 100 pips or so before I try and engage it short again. Now I know, monthly, it sure looks bearish. It's turning red. Weekly, I got a weekly sell bar. Daily, I have multiple days down, but it's still an uptrend and it's just pulling back to the moving averages. So four hour chart, yes, everything is looking really good right now, but it's overdone. So what I'm hoping for is that we can come back up into this river. Please notice on the hourly, we've got that beautiful crossover, the 200 and the 100 uh, crossing over. That's grandpa, uh, grandpa right there, grandma right there. Everything's pointed down. It just looks nice. So on lower time frames, I would be preferentially short because I can see the downtrend in every way. Every chart I look at shows down, and the trend is your friend. Now, in my opinion, there's times to go against the trend. So what I did this morning when I exited all my shorts over here is I went long. And I only bought like two or three tiny little pieces. And I'm just looking for a small bounce right from where we are right now. I would love to see back here 65. I'd love to see over here for like 90 something. And I know this area was supportive. You put all your little session, you know, um, bottoms in there. And yeah, it really and truly tried to hold. Uh, many times it tried to hold in Asia and London and, and New York and it, it held over here. It held again in Asia, you know, then it just fell to, pe to pieces. So, um, my preference is that we would hook back up to kiss the breakdown spot 
and please notice everything's falling. The 15 minute chart, this 200 MA will be here in just, what, a couple of hours? <laughs> six hours maybe it's not going to take very long for this 200 to reach here um i want it up here and up here then that's where i'd like to get short so i don't know if this is a help to you or not but that that's how i analyze uh, a trade it's just me I'm trying to pick the better of two and i think pound new zealand has more room more conviction more power i believe Currently, at long, 6 50 p.m. Eastern time, we have the and PPI month of the month. I really, really like it. Um, short, but right now I want to bounce. Once I get that bounce, I will be very glad to reshort. So, I I hope this helps you. I'm just you know trying to teach a little bit. That seems to be my calling in, in life, and. Uh, I'm not saying that this one isn't isn't good as well. It just it just doesn't show up as greatly on the monthly. Okay, I I know that's a weekly sell. That's a double tap. I mean, it's yeah, you don't see it on the monthly, but you do see it on the weekly. Yes, we were short. Yes, it came down. It's it's pretty cool. Yeah, there is a trend line here. Okay, and we we broke it. That's that's all good, but that was then, right? So what do I do with it now? I'm not going to short the bottom. I don't I don't wait all these days to short the bottom. I, I short it up here. We all short it up here. We're not trying to capture the bottom short. So uh, we look at this and pr pretty much equally, I, I don't want to be in a, a um, not an equal opportunity employer. You know, uh, I'm willing to employ the Pound Australia if it could come up and, and hook into this location, the beautiful 100 and the sinking investor trend that would be nice I'd, I'd love that so you know e even here you have a bull harmonic right wouldn't you rather see the the um, separation between the 100 and the 200 as they come down here towards this b target so from where we're trading at right now wouldn't you rather have it pop a hundred first before going short i don't want to short the bottom <laughs> I'd rather wait for 100 pips or who knows, maybe 105. You know, you don't have to be crazy about how many pips something moves. 100, 105, I'm not fighting over small things like that. See, on the four hour and the one hour, it's pretty much the same thing. Um, I just would like it over here before I decide to sell. So anyway, I uh, hope that helps and just a little bit of teaching. And, um, you know, if you like, please remember, you know, this is not financial advice, right? I mean, everybody is a big boy. Everybody's a big girl. Everybody's, you know, a big trader. And we do our own thing, obviously. So, you know, once you push a button, it's pre you know, pretty obvious you own it, right? Never take a trade that you don't understand. Never take a trade you don't agree with or believe in. Um, do your own due diligence, make your own decisions. That should be par for the course. It's just normal. Uh, everybody makes their own decisions, but I'm just showing you what I'm thinking and what I would like. And, it, and if I get it, I'm probably going to do it. <laughs> but I work a little different than a lot of people. Um, you know, there's a lot of people that are um, uptight. I guess that would be the nicest way for me to use a word I'm thinking of. <laughs> a lot of people are very uptight about entries. They want absolute perfection. You know, I, I, I can't short up here at 107 because it's going to be looking bullish when it's heading up there. And how do I know how much higher it's going to go? And, you know, where's my stop? And, you know, blah, blah, blah. Select one. <laughs> Select one. Every Everybody, you know, has a brain. God gave it to you. You know, if, if you need a stop... Select one. It's either a dollar amount or it's going to be a pip amount or maybe it'll be some candlestick somewhere, you know. But I, I just, I gave up, man. I don't think that way anymore, okay? Very, very different. My account right now is, um, well, the new one, um, the one I showed you last week, it's 40, I think today is 40 days old. So that's, uh, that's yeah, 40 days old. That's eight weeks. That's two months. Um, I just hit 60%. Okay, and I don't, 
care if something goes against me. See, it doesn't bother me because I trade small enough I can handle it. So if it, if it came up here and I got short and the trade spit in my face and, you know, just climbed higher and higher and higher, you know, it's not for me. You know, maybe it's your way and I'm not trying to knock you, but if that's what you want to do, you know, you go right ahead. But I don't care. If it, if it goes up 40 extra pips, doesn't bother me one bit. It's just money. And so I will put a small piece on here. I'll put another small piece over there somewhere. And, you know, in my opinion, as it comes down, if I didn't capture, you know, the first trade right, uh, you know, it comes down and so I click out. And then I'm stuck with the upper one. And 40 pip fall. It's better. It's obviously a better price. And then I'll just make more on the way, on the way down in, in the time ahead. So anyway, where are we looking? And ultimately, ultimately, ho hopefully many, many weeks from now, it might take, it might take a month. I really don't know how long uh, this is going to take, but I would love to see it down here. See, we've got some, uh, I think I went over this last week. Maybe, maybe I, maybe I didn't do it on this pair, but, uh, oops, slightly running out of time. But look at the wicks. See the, the critical wick, critical wick, critical. It's all saying, hi, I'm resistance and resistance and resistance. And then it's not. And here it was retested and it went up like mad. So I, I like this spot over here. Somewhere down here. 200. You know, how long does it take to get there? Don't know. Don't really care. We get there when we get there but I'd rather it burst higher first. So if I capture 300 down here, I'll feel pretty good about it. And if it squeezes me by 40 and then comes down, what's wrong with me letting one of them go and holding on to the better one? Then I got 340, so it's not really gonna um, affect me. You know, it's, and, and, and also, <laughs> I'm not even gonna hold on to it. Uh, just being honest, I won't even hold on to it that long. What I'll do is trade it multiple times per day because all in these sessions that you see here, the um, session indicator, I will long this thing and short this thing a dozen times in a day as it drops 90. Short it as it drops 90. You know, um, it, It's all lower time frames, you know what I'm saying? Uh, go into the five minute chart, you can see it. There are so many chances to get this. So nice, powerful trend. And uh, the trend is your friend until it comes to an end. Please remember that, okay? And trade with that trend and you should be all right. But you want to get the reversal first, then re-engage the trend. Okay. Wishing you a wonderful and safe week. Uh, please trade safely. Market makers are out to get you. So try and keep your money where it belongs in your pocket and not theirs. If you like uh, what you heard today, you know, give us a thumbs up or a like or a comment or something, whatever. Uh, if you'd like to try our trade room out, check us out at www.theforexmentor.com. Those posts you see on my Twitter account, if you happen to go there, those are real. Those are not fake. Photoshop is for scammers, losers, and liars, and I do not even know how to Photoshop, so that's not made up. Uh, any post I make of my own or of my roomies, you know, when I, when I tell you how bad of a day I had today that I didn't even make 300 pips, but one of my roomies nailed 2,422, I think it was. That's no lie. <laughs> he rubbed my face in it. Boy, I, I really, uh, I wanted to jump off a cliff. And, uh, no, <laughs> just kidding. I'm just kidding. I, I love him and I'm, and I'm glad that he's doing good, but he, he's a scalping maniac. So, uh, very nice. And I guess he probably stayed up all through London to get that. That was a good job. All right. Have a great week. And, uh, thanks for watching the video. We'll see you next week. Ciao for now.